remediation and the construction, and maybe Ray Brodetsky is here um, from our environmental uh, advisor to answer that question. I'm Mimi Ray Gordeski with Environmental Liability Management, and uh, since we met last week, we've taken a very close look at our remediation schedule and how it will be phased with our construction schedule, and I have more information for you on that, so I'll just step through the phases so it's clear to everyone how we anticipate remediation and construction to proceed on the site. As I mentioned, um, well, I guess I'll just go through the phasing. The first thing that will happen is there are a number of existing structures on the site, all of which will be demolished. <coughs> Any asbestos, um, asbestos materials within the structures will be removed from those buildings prior to demolition. All the debris will be removed from the site. After demolition, we'll be installing a couple more soil and ground soil borings and groundwater monitoring wells beneath the former footprints of those buildings. This is a we're doing this at the request of the city DEP because we weren't able to get our drill rigs inside those buildings when we did the initial phases of investigation. Um, we are expecting to find um, constituents similar to those that were identified during the initial phases of investigation during that supplemental phase, and those constituents will be handled in the same manner that the previously identified constituents will be managed. If there's anything new that comes to light during that investigation, we will be working with both the city DEP and the state DEC to address those constituents. Um, next, the known hotspot locations containing product saturated soils and if you'll remember from our conversation last week, there are only two locations that have product saturated soil. They're contiguous to each other, um, and they're basically in the north central portion of the site. Um, those locations will be physically excavated and removed from the site uh, two, two feet below the water table, and they'll be disposed of off-site in accordance with applicable federal, state, and local regulations. Um, after the hotspots are removed, a specialized remediation contractor will be coming to the site to either um, solidify or treat in place the residual contaminants that would remain um, on, within the footprint of the site. Um, one thing to, that I want to be very clear about, the on-site treatment of the soil coupled with the protective measures that are going to be implemented on the site, including the sub-flat depressurization system and the vapor barrier, are just as effective, equally as effective, as complete soil removal in eliminating future exposure to any tenants on the site and people that would enjoy the parkland on the site. Additionally, advantages to solidification in place include the fact that you won't be bringing thousands of trucks filling them with soil, disturbing that soil, releasing particulates into the atmosphere, and then trucking them through your neighborhood. Now, once these remedial measures are complete, the, the, the general construction phase will start, and that will include construction of the building foundation. There are two construction components that also serve remedial uh, remedial, per remedial measures, and those are the sub-slab depressurization system to alleviate or mitigate potential for any vapor intrusion, and the vapor barrier. And because those are construction measures and they're part of the building foundation, they really can't be built, so you can't do it in advance, they're part of the foundation. So, um, as I didn't make clear to you when we spoke last week, the bulk of the remediation really is happening in advance of the construction phase. And the only remedial elements that will occur during construction are installation of the sub system and the vapor barrier. 